Hi, in this session I'm going to show you how to use the IRR function. Now IRR means internal rate of return. It's a capital budgeting concept used to help analyze projects or investments to see if it's a good investment. Uh, you, usually you can use it to analyze in one investment over another or investment in itself to see if you should accept it or reject it. So before we get into the mechanics of how to calculate IRR in Excel, let me go ahead and show you a brief overview of IRR. So here we're going to go through an overview, a brief tutorial of IRR. Now according to Wikipedia Invest Investatopia, first with Wikipedia, the IRR, internal rate of return, is also known as an economic rate of return is the rate of return used in capital budgeting to measure and compare the profitability of investments. So as I mentioned earlier, we, we may be pitting one investment over another, should we do one project over another. Now with Investopia, Investopedia, it's saying that the IRR, the discount rate, is often used in capital budgeting. That makes the net present value of all cash flows from a particular project equal zero. So here we bring up the concept of net present value, NPV. Now I have another video that talks about NV, NPV and I'll put a link to that in the description or uh, of this particular video, you'll see it. But basically when NPV equals zero, and we're looking at the cash flows and trying to figure out what is the rate of return. So the formula down there is here. This is the formula for NPV, but now with that we're assuming NPV equals zero. We are trying to figure out for R, the discount rate. So. What are some of the considerations with IRR? As a rule of thumb, the higher a project's IRR, the more desirable a project. So if we're trying to compare projects and had the projects had similar requirements, all things being equal, the project with the highest RR would be preferred. Now, if you can find a return outside of a project, if we're trying to measure just a project in itself, uh, and if there's an investment, say, in the securities market, the stock market, and it offers a higher percentage rate of return, then generally that project probably would be rejected because we can find a rate of return outside that's much better. Now, the cash flows don't need to be the same amount each period. So, for example, in year one, year two, year three, they don't need to all be $250 coming in. It could be $100 coming in the first year, $200 coming in the second year, maybe $50 coming in the third year. They could be different but they need to occur at regular intervals. They have to occur at the end of the month or the end of the year, each each period. So depending if you're doing your periods uh, monthly or yearly, they have to occur at the same time. Now in Excel, there is a way to do calculations where the, if we have irregular cash flows, maybe they occur every three months for one time and then every two months for another time, uh, that could be calculated with a modify RIR function in Excel. And I'll show you how to do that later on. Also, there's one caveat uh, that I want to mention here. There's a, there's a couple caveats with IRR, but one kind of important caveat with IRR is it may not be effective if the cash flows have a mixture of positive and negative numbers. So, for example, maybe in year one, we have a positive inflow of cash flow, and maybe year two, there's a negative outflow or negative inflow. Maybe, maybe we lost money or we're not making any money. And then the third year, there's there's a positive cash flow. If, so if there's a mixture of that, there may be some instances where you would get two IRRs, which it's hard to decipher what which one should I choose. So in that instance, maybe NPV is a better analysis tool for trying to consider whether to choose project A or project over project B. So these are some of the considerations we need to be aware of. Now, I'm going to go through an example here. Uh, let's say we have we have to invest $1,000 into either project A or project B, which one is the better investment. And we expect a return from either of the projects to have a duration of five years. So if I think about using that formula and kind of charting it out here in year one, year two, to year five, we have the formula kind of broken down into each of the years. So we'd have, for example, if we were to get $250 back each year for this particular project, the cash flows that are coming in, and that'd be over the one plus the discount rate. And the first year would be to the power of one, the second year power two, power three, power four, power five. Now, if we sum that all up and the NPV equals zero, then we, we can figure out which we can try to figure out what the discount rate is. And to do that by hand is, is fairly tedious and probably challenging. 
And so we have tools like Excel to do that for us. So now we're back in Excel. And based on that first example, we have our project A, which we are shelling out or putting out $1,000 and each subsequent year on the first of that year you can see here we are getting two hundred fifty dollars back for that project so the formula for IRR is just equals IRR this is the function and all we need to do is just select the values our initial output value how much we are going to invest plus the preceding values for each of the years that we're going to get positive cash flow coming back in I'll go ahead and just press return and we can see here that it's going to be 7.93%. Now, in it itself, we won't really know if this is a good investment or not. Unless we've determined that w w there's a rate of return that we are looking at, maybe 5%, and we see from the cash flows that we're, we're getting, we're actually are getting 8%. So we're saying that now Project A is a good investment. But what if we have a comparison? What if we have, what, what if we have Project B? And in Project B, we are estimating that we're going to get these particular cash flows and they vary that's still okay using IRR and it's going to be the same arguments IRR we're going to have our values here selecting our initial output that's how much we're going to invest and then the cash flows that we're going to get press enter and you can see that the internal rate or the IRR is less so we would choose project A over it and if we did a NPV, if we wanted to, to kind of validate if this is right, we can take a look and see at the different percentages. This NPV, um, this formula, I show in another video, so I have a link there. You can take a look and uh, go to that video, check out what NPV is, and there's a little overview of, of how NPV is calculated. So if we wanted to do another comparison just to validate whether or not this was a good investment, we can also use NPV to kind of figure out well, look here, we're looking at Project A's NPV at 7%, 6%, and 5%. It's still kind of a better investment than Project B because we have a better rate for Project A. So as I said earlier, what if we didn't have projects that had the same recurrence of the cash flows? Instead of having it occur in kind of equal time periods, we had them occur in different time periods. So the XIR function helps alleviate that, helps address that. So let's, in this example, let's say we had a stock investment and we're investing in stock A or B or something like that. And the first initial investment is we put $1,000 in uh, and subsequent in February, we put another $1,000 in. So a couple months later on in July, we put $500 in and the following year we put $3,000 in on different months. And in 2008, we decided to sell it uh, and we'd make $7,000. So how do we know what kind of rate of return we get? Well, we can use the XIRR function that helps us look at the cash flows. These are the cash flows. When you really think about it, these are the cash flows, uh, positive, negative, and positive. And IR helps us determine that based on the date, not because the dates don't recur at a set time period or at an equal time period. So the XIRR basically is just XIRR, and then we have our values and then we also have our dates so we select our dates here and you can you notice that there's this guess argument and that's an optional argument what Excel does is if you didn't have the guess in there and it starts off at 10 percent and it goes through several iterations to guess that particular rate so we don't really need to have it in there but there's just a description there if you want to get some further information you can look at the help files and also have a description on it in the next tab that I'll show later on but with XIRR we can figure out our cash flow based on our cash flows and some irregular payment periods what our rate of return is and in this instance it's about 13 percent 13.3 percent so if you didn't have regular recurring periods and you had periods that were not equal the XIR function would work so I mentioned earlier the IR function might not work well if you had unconventional payments so in an instance where we would have an outlay of sixty dollars and then maybe we had a inflow of 160 and then an inflow of negative 105 it might not work that well and I'll show you the calculation here if we did IRR and we just did our values here 
it's going to give us 16%, right? But remember, NP IRR is a function where NPV equals zero. So if we just use the NPV function and can kind of chart out the different percentages. So let's go back to our formula here. Let me go back to our formula here. And we had it where the N the we knew everything. We, had the, we knew the cash flow. We knew the rate. All we're trying to figure out now is NPV. And we go back and try to chart it out here for our different rates. We would see that NPV where it equals zero, it occurs between 60 and 70 percent. And if we go further down, it also occurs here between 50 and 51. So which one do we choose? So kind of an explanation of why it chose 16 percent, 16.67 percent is here, where if there's more than one acceptable ANSI, the RR function returns the first one it finds. So in this instance, where you'd have unconventional cash flows, where there are multiple positive and negative cash flows, in this case, RR might not be a good tool to do the analysis. Rather, NPV, NPV is probably a better tool to figure out if the NPV is greater or less than zero. So if you should pr go with, accept the project or decline the project. So that's just one large caveat of IRR. It, it's, it's really simple to use when you really think about it, but you need to be aware that if you would have some unconventional cash flows, it might not provide the best answer. But the reason why a lot of people use may use IRR in the financial circles is it's fairly easy to understand and to use. So there you go. There's IRR and XIRR in Excel. Hope that helps. Thanks for watching.